emergency ordinance and never used to overspend beyond a debt limit. Hello and a good afternoon. Thanks for joining me, Aslani Adani. Welcome to Updates at Noon. The COVID-19 Immunization Task Force CITF has apologised for the technical hiccups that occurred during the booking of the second round opt-in AstraZeneca vaccine appointment slots yesterday. In a statement, CITF said it views seriously the technical hiccups that occurred during the booking, adding that it would take actions against irrelevant parties as it involves public and national interests. It also reiterates that those who have registered under the National COVID-19 Immunization Program PICK will still be vaccinated, especially when the vaccination process is expedited in the coming months. It was reported that users could not access several features on the CITF website, thus prompting them to talk to social media to express their disappointment for failing to book the AstraZeneca vaccination slots. CITF said a total of 956,609 AstraZeneca vaccination slots for Malaysians below 60 years old residing in Kuala Lumpur, Selangor, Penang, Johor and Sarawak had been taken up yesterday in about an hour. A total of 1 million... 261,000 doses of AstraZeneca vaccine were offered, of which 275,208 doses were booked by senior citizens when it was first opened from 23rd May until yesterday, adding that 29,183 people who were on the waiting list from the previous round are also put on the queue to receive the jab. It also expressed thanks to the public for carrying out their responsibilities to ensure that the country would achieve herd immunity to fight against the COVID. COVID-19 outbreak. The Sabah government yesterday announced that restrictions on the movement between Sabah and Labuan will take effect immediately following the detection of the Indian COVID-19 variant in the federal territory. State local government and housing minister Datuk Sri Masidi Manjun in a statement said exemptions were given for the movement of essential services and essential goods, safety and health or medicine and with special permission. Elaborating further, Dr. Sri Masidi said public ferry transport is also only for necessary services and goods while permission applications for movement between Sabah and Labuan for long-distance couples will also not be considered from 28th May to 7th June. Meanwhile, Dr. Sri Masidi, who is also the official spokesperson for COVID-19 in Sabah, said the main factor for the increase in COVID-19 cases in the state was the failure of the public and owners of business premises to comply with standard operating procedures SOPs, especially the wearing of face masks. Commenting on the development of COVID-19, he said Sabah recorded 229 new positive cases yesterday, bringing the cumulative number of the outbreak to 61,057 cases, while 81 patients were cured and discharged, bringing the cumulative number of patients cured in Sabah to 58,968. The government has never used the emergency ordinance to raise revenue or increase spending beyond the statutory debt ceiling approved by Parliament in August 2020. Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafro Tengku Abdul Aziz said all government loans are based on expenditures approved by Parliament during the Budget 2021 tabling. He said the Parliament had voted in August last year to increase the debt limit to 60% of gross domestic product from 55% previously. Tengku Datuk Sri Zafro also revealed that the government loans amounted to 81.8 billion ringgit as of April 2021 and about 99.3 billion ringgit as of this month and not 115.53 billion ringgit as claimed by certain quarters. 8 billion ringgit ini merangkumi 31.6 billion ringgit bagi membiayai semula hutang terdahulu yang matang dan 50.2 bilion ringgit yang sememangnya digunakan untuk membiayai perbelanjaan pembangunan. Ini semua termasuklah perbelanjaan dari kumpulan wang COVID-19 yang mana 17 bilion ringgit adalah untuk tahun 2021 merangkumi inisiatif-inisiatif semasa tempoh PKP2 dan PKP3. 
The minister was speaking in a video posted on his Facebook where also denied various unfounded claims including the government had raised 115.53 billion ringgit up to May 2021 in order to spend at will and that the government's borrowings and spending activity lacked transparency amid the state of emergency. Malaysia fully supports the Council of Palm Oil Producing Countries, CPOPC, moved to submit an objection to Belgium, which is planning to ban the use of palm oil as a biofuel next year. Plantation Industries and Commodities Minister Datuk Dr. Muhammad Khairuddin Aman Razali in a statement said that CPOPC had made its objection through a letter dated 24 May to Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo. Dr. Dr. Mohamed Khairuddin said Belgium's decision pursuant to the implementation of the European Union Renewable Energy Directive 2, EU Red 2, came after a similar move taken by France and Lithuania. He explained that as the world's second largest palm oil producer, Malaysia is extremely disappointed with the action that was taken without considering the country's determination and effort to ensure the sustainability of the palm oil industry. He said Belgium's move is clearly inconsistent with the free trade principles as outlined by the World Trade Organization, WTO, and is a form of discrimination against Malaysia's palm products. Previously, on 15 January, Malaysia initiated legal action against EU and its member countries with regard to the implementation of EU Red 2 by filing a request for consultation through the dispute settlement mechanism under the WTO. The legal action is currently ongoing and in accordance to the procedures outlined by the WTO. No compromise or protection will be offered to those found guilty of conducting sexual harassment in sports industry. That is the promise made by Youth and Sports Minister Dato Sri Rizal American Nine American as he orders his officers and the National Sports Council MSN to contact and assist former national swimmer Cindy Ong who has claimed to have been sexually harassed during her swimming days. In a statement, the minister admitted that he was very touched and angry and disappointed to learn of what Cindy and other athletes had to endure after a media outlet highlighted her claims recently. He insisted that they would help lodge a police report about the acts committed and assured that the NSC would provide a full cooperation to the police in the investigation. Dr. Sri Riza American also explained that no national athlete should endure such harassment because every athlete and official should be in a safe environment at the National Training Centre to develop their talent and sporting potential without any disruption. At the same time, he reminded Malaysia are not to condone such harassment without taking any further action. A local media outlet carried an expose by Cindy and another former national swimmer who was sexually harassed and sexually assaulted for years during their time as national swimmers. Harimau Malaya head coach Tan Cheng Ho hopes his players will pick up good tips when playing world number 99th ranked Bahrain in a Tier 1 international match at the Bahrain National Stadium in Rifa on Friday. Cheng Ho said the friendly match against Bahrain could be a teaser on what to expect from the United Arab Emirates UAE in a crucial tie of the World Cup 2022 Asian Cup 2023 qualifiers on June 3rd in Dubai as Bahrain possess a similar pattern of play with UAE. The 52-year-old coach also hopes his player can cope with the pressure after losing 1-4 to Kuwait in a friendly match last Sunday. All the players feel uh, disappointed with the result and the performance. Uh, uh, then after that, I think that is a good lesson for the, the players to learn. Then uh, we have to uh, step, uh, step up and uh, uh, we have to give our best uh, playing Cheng against Hose, Bahrain. That is the Cheng best say they have to be best, more careful against Bahrain as the West Asian team drew 1 1 with Ukraine in the friendly match on the same day. Uh, Cheng Ho also said that this coaching team are still analyzing the fitness level of their players and the tactics to use against Bahrain. After the UAA match, Malaysia will play Vietnam on 11 June and Thailand on 15 June to wrap up their Group G fixtures. 
That ends today's edition of Updates at Noon. In our top story, emergency ordinance never used to overspend beyond that limit. Join me again at 10pm tonight on my free view, Saluran Berita, RTM Channel 123. You can also stream the channel via YouTube or RTM Click, web portal and mobile app. I'm Azlan Yadani. Goodbye for now.